it's Mike with you, Tass, again. I'm at RailsConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Aaron Patterson. You might know him as TenderLove on Twitter and, and GitHub and all those uh, social places, uh, but he's going to be giving the footnote to the to the conference tonight. I um, can't really call it the keynote because it's at the end. I don't know what to call it. But, the uh, anti-keynote. The, yeah, the yeah, yeah, anti-keynote. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to, uh, to speak with me. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what your talk is is going to be about? Yeah. Um, well, first, I guess so. I guess the first thirty percent is just going to be like jokes and trolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second thirty percent is going to be I don't know some like bugs and stuff with like you know active record internals, and the final sixty percent is going to be. Uh, excuse me, the final 50% is going to be um, about adequate record. And I know that adds yeah. up to 110%, but <laughs> it's, it's, I always like to give yeah. 110%. <laughs> it's 110%, it's 100%, just don't add it. <laughs> you know, don't add. So, yeah, it's just going to be like, I don't know, jokes, bugs, and then adequate record is what we're going to be talking about. Okay, what is, what is adequate record? Uh, it's a... Th- it's a project I've been working on. I, it didn't. I've been working on it for a very long time, but I didn't really have a name for it. But what it is is it's just a set of patches on top of Active Record. Like okay. it's just stuff that I've been doing on top of Active Record, specifically for performance, mm-hmm. like performance improvements to Active Record. Is it is it like a, just more of a streamlining of, of of the internals or? Well, it's been so basically I've been refactoring the internals for a very long. Like I've had this idea for the performance improvement and what the what the main performance improvement is is basically SQL statement generation caching so actually the string that you pass to the database or, or that active record passes to the database like the actual SQL statement it, right. it caches the generation of that so we only do that once and your queries end up being faster from that uh, but I've been working on basically internal refactoring for literally years just to get to the point where I could do I could have the this particular thing, but I never had a name for it until recently. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, that sounds like uh, like what in other database engines where you can lean on some of that query caching inside of it. You're, you're pulling some of that capability out into into the Ruby layer, the app layer, so it can. Yeah, yeah, we are. That. We actually already do. So Active Record actually already does um, query caching, like uses prepared statements and does cache query, query, yeah, cache query execution. So we do that. The problem though is that even though we even though we use those prepared statements, mm-hmm. we still have to generate the SQL statement in order to look up the prepared statement and then do that. So we've had we've always had this overhead before querying the database of like building up, you know, building up the the query before we go out. So this basically eliminates that overhead as part of the stuff I've been working on. Yeah. And you've, you've been a contributor to Rails for a while. Yeah. It was Rails the first uh, open source projects you were involved in, or how did you come to being a Rails core? Yeah, no, no, not at all. Rails was not the first thing I worked on at all. Um, I guess I've been working on, well, my very first open source commit was, or open source patch was probably in, what was that, 2001, I think? Um but it was like it was to a Perl Perl library. Don't Google me, <laughs> Perl, please. It's embarrassing. <laughs> um, but you don't want anybody to know you did Perl. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> no, my first like my first real major open source stuff was with Ruby in maybe 2006, working on the mechanized okay. mechanized gem. That was like the first my first like real you know yeah meat. Oh, uh, so that was a, a port of the Perl mechanized. Perl mechanized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By Andy Laster, yep. who yep. I've also interviewed. Ah, oh, awesome. He's awesome. Also from my neck of the woods. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. 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 So 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 from one open source project to another, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm making the network. I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> I mean, all the open source contributors. Yeah, yeah. So I worked on, actually, I I mean, I didn't actually start Mechanize. I inherited it from, I inherited it from somebody. Like, I was using it, I was using it a lot. And, like, I actually have a fun story about using it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I like the current or the maintainer when I picked it up, he wasn't he wasn't working on it so much, right. so I picked it up from him and that was like my first 
responsibility, I guess. Right. So, so that's when you became a, a grown up in, in Foss. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but on the, is that when you decided to go with the beard or no. <laughs> you're like, Oh, I own something. I got a responsibility. Yeah. I probably got to grow up, <laughs> grow out the beard. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, but from there, when did you learn about rails? Uh, so Basically, around the same time, I was getting into Ruby, working on like basically working on Mechanize, um, just to do some oh automation, like web automation stuff. Um, and then around that same time, the fifteen minute video came out. Oh yeah, the, the build a blog post. Yeah, different. and then I saw so I saw that. Build a blog. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I was like, wow, I gotta try this out. So I yeah. tried out like I tried out Rails from there and I I loved it. I was actually a I was actually a Java developer at the time. Like I worked at a worked on J2EE systems um, and saw the saw the blog in 15 minutes and I was like I must do this. <laughs> this looks so much easier than my job. <laughs> yeah. And more fun. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, so that's how I got introduced like how I was introduced to Rails and then I don't know maybe about a year later I got a job. I took a job doing Rails development <laughs> for a startup. And then, so, was, and then you just started contributing patches? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did a lot of, like, basically throughout that time, my open source portfolio was growing, I suppose. And um, uh, so at this startup, I got experience doing Rails development. Like, I didn't really contribute any patches or anything. I was just an app developer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, after that job, I got a job at at t and I was doing app development there as well, but it turns out that like... Oh, at t Interactive, yeah, the Seattle a Ruby thing? Yep, at t Interactive, yeah, I got a job there, and they, um, it turns out they had a lot of Ruby developers, and a lot of them were using my open source stuff, mm -hmm. and they also needed patches to Rails, yeah. and I guess like one thing led to another, and that's like that's basically how I got involved. Yeah, I, I have to say, it was it kind of a little trippy to meet people and be like, are you using my stuff? Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It was very, like... Uh, so at the time, I had... I mean, you know, I knew there were people out there who used my software, right. but I was... It was kind of an like abstract thing. Well, I was... Yes, yeah, so it was kind of abstract. It was all, I was also completely oblivious to the actual number of people who were really using it. Because, I mean, you know, you only get, like... You get a bug report or whatever. You only get one of... I mean... You get a bug reports from a very small percentage of people who actually use your software, right. and like you don't understand exactly how small a percentage yeah. that is, right? So then when you understand, like, oh, it's actually a very tiny percentage, which means that there are tons of people using your software, it kind of it blows your mind. It's it's yeah. pretty incredible. So yeah, it was very nice. It was yeah. Well, and now here you're speaking to a conference where a, probably the vast overwhelming majority. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I said exactly this to, to DHH, but, uh, but you know, I, I pay my bills using these tools. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's, I, I, I often wonder for, for people who are running large projects or contributing to these, does that ever alter your, your perception of, of the relationship with, like, or do you just try not to think about that too much? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think about that. It actually, like, that actually makes me very happy that people are using my software to pay, you know, pay bills. I mean, like, I, I don't know, like, I... <sighs> I, I like got all serious on you, man. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like it's actually so. It's actually really cool to me because um, I want to be able to help people, right? Like ideally, I would I want to help as many people as possible, and like my skills are programming. Mm -hmm. Like that is what I do, and that's something I can do well. And I feel like. Um, I have more reach to help people like doing by doing open source stuff. I feel like I'm actually improving the lives of more people than say, if I was working on an online advertising website, right. Yeah, <laughs> which is where, yes, exactly. Or where, so like that's, I mean, 
that's why I love doing what I do, and I'm happy to think about that. It makes me happy that people are making money with software I write. Yeah, so so it feels good and it's fun, and that, and that's overall the vibe you give on on your Twitter and everything is you do the Friday hugs. You have your cat Gorby Puff. Yes, yeah. Gorby Puff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can remember if it's Gorby Puff or just Gorby. Well, uh, well, his full name is Gorbachev Puff Puff Thunderhorse the Third, but we call him Gorby Puff for short. Gorbachev, Gorbachev Puff Puff Thunderhorse. Thunderhorse the Third. The Third. Yeah. yeah. So you can hear it here. Please, please <laughs> get it right. On, on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I like so I was thinking You about, don't know him well enough to call him Garby. I was thinking about changing my name to Thunder Horse because it sounds like it sounds super awesome. When when I got married, I was like, "Hey, what do you think about changing our last name to Thunder Horse? Then we can be in a band or something." Yeah, no, we'll be, yeah, we'll be the band. We do, you do have the metal vibe going right now. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, I'm going to get a contact high. No, I, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I feel like I should be getting a contact high. I'm not actually going to get uh, Erase, erase. No, I'm not going to erase that. Um, but, uh, well, uh, yeah, and, and and with with that relationship to the community, and it, sometimes I, I think I was thinking, looking at the conference, and I look at uh, DHH's very t- uh, early talk, which is funny in his wry sense of mm-hmm. his wry humor, his very Danish, mm-hmm. Denmarkian humor, uh, and then a little bit more. Uh, uh, American humor. Yes. Never, I'm a little bit more obvious, uh, and I, I and I was thinking, like, what is the analogy? I was thinking Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, <laughs> where they were both funny. But one was more, you know, the guffaw funny and... Um, hey <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the golf club, yes. you know. And uh, one was more funny, but in a very up, upright way. Uh, so I just think it's it's funny in our community that we have uh, we have our own Bing Crosby and, and Bob Hope. And, <laughs> and, you know, I, I think, though, when when DHH got up and, and, and gave his, his talk... That because he didn't have the Bob Hope to to foil off of, mm-hmm. I think some people took what he said a little too literally, a little too much to heart. Oh or yeah. Am I, mis- am I? No, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, but, but I think it's fine because um, that's basically why I'm going to be trolling. In yeah. My talk. Yeah. So when they when they listen to you, they should think of it in the context of. You know, these are two people who are central to the, the maintenance and future of rails, and they're kind of orbiting around each other in in getting the direction. And yes, listen. I am the we are the yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I suppose. one's going to have the little captain's cap uh, in uh, the golf club. And, yes, exactly. But I'm sure, uh, I'm sure DHH knows how to dance really well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, to speak thank you so I really much. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was good to meet you. Here, have a hug. <laughs> I'll get it on a Friday. Thanks. <laughs> User groups with lots to say, interviews, and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.